What's up everybody? Welcome back to another intern interview prep video. So in this video, we're going to do an intro to web APIs and we're going to talk specifically about REST APIs and GraphQL. When I was an intern at PayPal, this came up and a lot of teams, if you're going to go to a web development team, I would say 90% of teams are either going to be using REST APIs or GraphQL. So if you know this and you're able to know the basics in an interview and talk about why we use them and how we use them, I think you're going to be golden. And real quick, I just want to say sorry for not putting up new videos. Life has been crazy. They've been working on my house for a few months and it's been really hard to record while they're in here banging up doors and making noise, but that's winding down. So I'm hopefully going to crank out a bunch of videos over the winter break and help you guys prepare for those interviews. Let's just get started. All right, cool. So REST APIs versus GraphQL intro to web APIs. So what is an API? An API stands for application programming interface and an API defines how a client or a client application can load data from a server or a server application. So it's basically a set of rules defining what to do with requests and how to fulfill them. So that might not make sense just now, but these next two slides will really help. So an API acts as the bridge between what the user sees in a client app. So when we say client app, we just mean an app that a user can use. So an app where a user is physically using the app and they can see the user interface like the buttons, the nav bar, etc. So it's a bridge between what the user sees and where the client app is pulling this data from. We have this example here which shows this mobile application is making a request via the API. The API goes to the backend system, goes to the server, runs this little mechanism to pull the data and then gives back the mobile application what it's looking for in a response. And similarly, there's this little graphic on the bottom where it shows a waiter is going back and forth between the user and the kitchen to request what the user wants and then serve back up what they asked for. Another picture that I think really helped me understand was this, and I actually saw it floating around on Twitter. It's really funny. So it's like this backend developer creates this API and then feeds it to the UI with the information that it needs. So like I said, in this video, we're going to go over what it would be like if we wanted to use Spotify's REST API and Spotify's GraphQL API. We're going to see the differences and we're going to talk about some of the downfalls of REST APIs and how GraphQL kind of solves some of these problems for developers. So like I said, we're going to do two different exercises, one with the REST API and one with the GraphQL API. We're doing both so that you guys can see what are the differences and why a lot of people and why a lot of modern teams and modern developers are switching over to GraphQL. All right, so, okay, so just to illustrate this real quick, we're going to have our app and we're going to have we're going to make requests to the Spotify web API and that API is going to go back and forth between our app and Spotify's servers where they hold all their data to give us the information that we want. And really quickly before we move on, I just want to bring up curl. We're going to use this in this video to make requests to our API via the command line. So curl stands for client URL. It lets you talk to the server via the command line, lets you make requests, and it's a great way to test APIs. If you have a Mac, and I believe also on Windows machines, it already comes installed. There's nothing that you have to do. You should be able to follow along right away without installing anything. All right, so moving along. In our theoretical Music Explorer app, these are the three things that we want to achieve. First, we're going to start off with REST API. So the three things are get the user's top artist, recommend artists similar to that artist, and then show a playlist cover art in the UI as part of the loading screen. So basically, the data that we need to get from our API is top artists of a specific user, similar artists to that artist, and some playlist cover art. So just remember, APIs is all about fetching information, fetching data, and then working with that data for your app. So let's go ahead. So what is a REST API? REST is an API architectural style. All it means is that there has to be a set of rules that this API follows in order to be considered REST, which we won't get into here because it's a more in-depth conversation, but just know all it means is that it has to check off some boxes for it to be considered REST. And for REST, you send your requests for data in the form of an endpoint along with a method. So there's a few key methods, get, post, put, delete. You can retrieve data, create data, update data, delete data. So in any request, you're going to need a method and then the endpoint. So you're going to say, I want to get, and then you need to say, get from where? What is the endpoint that you want to get? And the endpoints are little links that look like this, HTTPS slash API Spotify. And we'll look through the Spotify documentation to see all of them. But this is just an example so you can get used to seeing what an API endpoint looks like. So now let's look into Spotify's API 
reference. So if we go here, developer.spotify.com, we can go to docs, and then we can go to web API because that's what we're looking for. And you can see that's where I got this handy dandy image from. And now let's go look for the reference so we can see all of the different endpoints. So here you see on the left, it says endpoints. Let me try to zoom in for you guys. Boom. So endpoints and the available endpoints are album, artist, shows, episode, and you see if we expand any, they give us the different endpoint options and the different methods that we can do with this. So let's just say, for example, get album. If we click on this, it tells us this is what the endpoint looks like. This is the method that you have to use. And it tells us all about how to actually run this. So the thing that you're going to come to see about REST APIs and why a lot of people have chosen to move to GraphQL is that is that with REST APIs, we get a list of predefined endpoints to choose from, like we just saw, that were created by the Spotify developers. Now, we're not Spotify developers and we're using this for our own apps. So developers like us that aren't Spotify developers need to use this API and need to work with these existing endpoints to put together all the pieces that we want for our API. Remember, there were three things, top artists, related artists, and cover art. So we need to work with these predefined endpoints to figure out how we can extract that data. So we know we want to get the artist. Let's go ahead and switch back to the docs. So if we want to get artists, a user's top artist, we can see here that maybe it'll be in the user's endpoint, get user's top item. So this is it right here. And the endpoint is slash me slash top slash type where we either pass in artists or tracks. And here we see these are some other things that we can pass. So let's go into the console where we can actually run this. Okay, so here we can go to the console. Let's find that endpoint again. Use. So here, now that we found the endpoint in the console, we can just go ahead and click on this and we can say, okay, here's the API reference, get the top artist. Let me zoom back out just a bit. So here we know we wanna pass an artist because we wanna get the top artist. We want to make a limit, let's just say a five different artists that we wanna get. And we need to get this token, which you can do just by signing into Spotify and it'll allow you to request the token and boom. So now if we do go try it, we see down here the response came and it also gives you the curl command to do this um, request. So let's go ahead and copy this curl command just so you guys can see how to use it. Yeah, so let's just take a moment to look through this response. So we see that we're getting back an array of items that has objects inside of it to represent the top artists. So here we see we're getting external URLs, we're getting the followers, we're getting the genres, we're getting an ID, we're getting an image, um, we're getting another image, we're getting another image, we're getting the name, the popularity, the type, and the URI. And in our case, we just wanted to know what was the top artist. But we're also getting back a bunch of data that we don't want. And now we're stuck with as developers, we have to filter through this. We have to work with this data and massage it out to get what we want. And what I mean by massage it out is like, we really just want the name, right? But the name is nested in these objects. It's kind of hard to tell where even it's nested. So let's just go ahead and pull this up in a JSON formatter so that I can show you guys what I really mean. So let's go ahead and close this terminal. If we just go JSON formatter and we paste this in, here we'll see that it's an array of items and in here, there's a bunch of different objects and each object is one of the artists. So if we click here, this is all the information that we get for one artist when really all we wanted was the name. So if we needed to work with this, we would have to filter, we would have to go through all these um, nested objects and extract out what we want. So we were able to get that, boom. Now we wanna get the related artist. So let's go into our docs. So we need to pass in an ID. So what we can do is go to our original response that we just did and let's just pull an ID from there. Um, I think this is gonna work. And then let me make sure that I request a token for this and then let's go ahead and run it. Boom, so this did work. So let's go ahead and copy this curl command and run this in our terminal. I'm gonna clear this so it's easier to see. So we ran this and okay, so we wanted to get the related artist to Tory Lanes, right? So this spit back a bunch of stuff. It gave us, again, external URLs, followers, genres, IDs, images, a bunch of images, name, popularity, type, URI, 
followers, all that stuff. When again, we just wanted some related artists. We just wanted like five or 10 names. Now we have to sort and work and massage this data to get what we want. The last request that we would need to make for this app is the playlist cover art, playlist cover images. So let's click there. We have to pass in a playlist ID. I have one in there saved. I believe it's the first few numbers. And let's make sure we have a fresh token so it doesn't fail on us. And if we hit run, boom, we see that worked. So let's go ahead and run this in our terminal. So if we go here and we paste this, we'll see that we got the image URLs. Now we have made all three requests. We saw all three responses. And now let's talk about some of the problems that we ran into while working with this REST API. So REST endpoints are predefined and have fixed data structures. So what this means, like I said, that when we made that request, we're getting back an array of objects and in each of those objects, there's objects and there's nested objects and all of this is predefined. So there's no way that we can say, actually, for my request, can you just send back like one big array with nothing nested? Or can you just send me back like an object instead of an array of objects? So there's no way that we can say that. We just have to take whatever we get. And the endpoints are also predefined. So like I said, the Spotify developers created these endpoints for us to use. And really, they use them for them to use. So they use it to suit their needs of their app. But with us, since we didn't create those, we have to depend on how they structured those endpoints to get what we want. So for example, we had to make three different requests to do that, right? But if we created this API for our app's needs, we maybe would have said, hey, let's just put all that in one endpoint because we know we're going to need all three. So let's just go ahead and put that at all at one endpoint. But that's not the flexibility that you get with REST because they are defined by someone else. The other problems is that you can run into two things, overfetching and underfetching. And we saw overfetching happen to us all three times. And it happens when the client fetches more data than is needed. And this can make our app slower. Right now, we're only making really small requests, like a few number of them. But imagine if you were making hundreds of requests. Getting 10 times the data back that you expected is definitely going to be a problem. And on the other side, underfetching is another problem where it's kind of we experienced that too we just didn't see it explicitly where it's like you're not getting all the data that you want from an endpoint so you have to make another request so for example for top artists and related artists those were two separate requests but what if that was one endpoint where we could just say hit this one endpoint and in the response you're going to get the top artist and you're going to get the related artists so that was a case of underfetching because we didn't get what we wanted in one call so we had to make multiple calls and when you're making multiple requests with REST, these requests are asynchronous, which means that they don't all finish at the same time. They all go at their own pace and they fulfill when they fulfill. So if you are writing code for your app and you're waiting for these requests to fill in and you're waiting for these requests to come back, they might all finish at different times. So now you're stuck waiting like, OK, I have my cover art for the loading screen, so I'm going to show that. Or you can say I don't have the cover art for the loading screen. I have everything else, but the loading screen still hasn't fulfilled what I needed to. So I can't even show my app. I can't even show my loading screen yet because the request hasn't fulfilled. The other problem with the rest is that sometimes you'll be working with an API that isn't very well documented. So we see that the Spotify API actually does tell us what we can expect as a response. Response, you can expect a body and inside the body, there's going to be external URLs and inside external URLs, there's going to be a string. Then there's going to be a followers object and inside that followers object, there's going to be an href string, a total integer, genres, etc. So luckily we are working with one that does tell us what to expect, but that's not the case for all of them. Now, if you are working with one of the many REST APIs that doesn't have that, you don't know what to expect. So like I said, you don't know if you're going to get back an array of objects. You don't know if you're going to get back an object with nested objects. You don't know if you're going to get back a string. You have no idea. And the onus is on the API developers to make sure that this is well documented. And that's never good, right? Because now you're depending on other people for you to know what's going on as a developer. And you just kind of hope that there's good documentation and there might not be. Now let's get into GraphQL and how GraphQL solves some of these problems. So GraphQL is a new API standard that provides a more efficient, powerful, and flexible alternative to REST. There's this long, long paragraph, but really the point that we need to understand here, the most important point about GraphQL is that it gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more. So this is insinuating, right, that we can ask for what we want without running the risk of overfetching and underfetching. Now, if we were working with the GraphQL API, this is what our request would look like. We would make one single request to GraphQL and we would be able to declaratively choose what we want to query. 
So what I mean by that is instead of relying on predefined endpoints, we can declare, aka like very verbosely say, I want a request that gives me back these things and these things only. And if we look at the picture, that's exactly what we have. So let's go take a look at the GraphQL console. Inside of the query body, I can query for whatever I want. So another cool thing about GraphQL, which we'll talk about in a bit, is that they have this built-in schema docs where you can see what are the available queries that I can make. So I clicked on here and I see, okay, I can query for me. And inside of me, it returns of type private user. And private user, I can query all of these fields. I can do display name, I can do email, href. So that's how I figured out how to query here, right? So I did a query for me, my display name, and I don't even need to query for display name. Like I can delete this because we don't need this for our app, right? We just want the top artist. We want their name and their URI. And then I want to get all of the related artists that are related to this ID and this name. And like we said, instead of getting back all this other data, I just want the name of the related artist. I don't want anything else. And lastly, for the playlist cover art, we pass in a playlist ID, just like we had to for the rest endpoint and our user ID. And we ask back for the images, but inside of images, we have to tell it, we have to let it know what do we want. So the way I knew that is I go here, I'm gonna look for playlists playlist and then I'm going to look at the type playlist these are all the different things that I can query for so I saw okay I can query for image but you need to go a step further and say what do you want in the image you can ask for the height the URL and the width so I just asked for the URL which is a string so now if we run this by doing control enter it's going to ask us to log in and run it again and here we see we see here that the response is exactly what we asked for. We asked for the top artist, the name and the URI. That's exactly what we got. Okay, now scroll down because these are all my top artists. And then we asked for related artists. We said, hey, we just want the name. Don't send us any other information. And that's exactly what we got. We just got name. And lastly, for the playlist URL, we just got one URL, no height, no width, just the image that we wanted. So as you guys saw with GraphQL, it enables you to declaratively fetch the data and specify exactly what you want. And instead of working with these rigid endpoints, you can send queries to get back the data that you want. And again, this is better because it's faster instead of making multiple requests, you can just make one. And with the lower number of requests, with, a few, with fewer requests, you have less likelihood that you're waiting for another request to fulfill because you need it to show your UI. And I showed it really quickly, but the other cool thing is that the GraphQL schema empowers developers to know what to expect in their response. So now you don't have to depend on the developers who created the API to make sure that they document this. GraphQL generates this automatically for you. So if you go to any GraphQL playground online, you're gonna see that docs part on the side and it'll tell you, these are all of the possible types that you can query and all of the possible fields that you can query on that type. Just a, a note on GraphQL schema, GraphQL server uses a schema to describe the shape of your data graph and defines a hierarchy of types that you can fetch and what fields they have. The schema also specifies exactly which queries and mutations are available for clients to execute against your graph. The other cool thing about GraphQL is that the query and the response has the same shape. This is a key feature of GraphQL and empowers developers again to know exactly what to expect with each query. And what we mean by shape is like literally the shapes, right? So if we look here, the shape of this is an outer object with an inner object and the inner object has one, two, one, right? And then inside that object, there's another object that has two nested fields. And if we look at the response, that's exactly what we get an outer object and then the inside object that has this field, and then that top artist has two nested fields in the response. So the request and the response have the same shape. So that means that whenever you're making a request, you know exactly what your response is gonna look like. And that, my friends, is why GraphQL is awesome. That's why so many teams are adopting GraphQL at the enterprise level, and that's why so many developers like you and me are now looking to GraphQL instead of REST endpoints. So I hope this video helped. Let me know if you guys have any questions, and check out my other video, which will be coming out soon if it's not already out by the time of this video, on how we can actually work with the REST API to build out a very basic application. This is gonna help you stand out in your interviews for internships, and I think it's really gonna make a difference and help you level up as a developer if you're kind of stuck in this phase of like, oh, I'm trying to learn, but it's really hard for me to build stuff. So again, check out my next video about building with an API, and thanks everybody, bye.